Hello everyone. Imagine you are opening an app to explore its features, but the app turns out to be a chaotic mess. The buttons of the app are scattered, texts are difficult to read, and you don't know where to navigate to. You'll definitely feel frustrated, right? This happens when layout and composition in UI UX design is not taken care of. So, in today's video from Simply Learn, we will be diving deep into the world of layout and composition in UI UX design. We will go through the best practices that can help in a proper layout and composition of your design. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. But before that, if you are interested in a career in UI UX, join our immersive UI UX certification program and become an expert in just five months. The course offers live online classes led by renowned faculty from IIIT Bangalore. Get hands-on with Capstone projects, craft your portfolio on Dribble, and receive personalized coaching on top designer tools. Enroll now and unlock endless possibilities in the realm of UI UX design. So let's get started. Let's not mix up layout and composition and get you confused. Let's start with what's a layout. So layout is the arrangement of elements that you see on your screen. It can be buttons, icons, texts, images, or anything. So a well-designed layout should be such that it helps the users to find easily what they're looking for. So some of the key components of layout are focal point, visual hierarchy, grid system, alignment and proximity, and white space. Let's discuss one by one. Focal point. A focal point in layout design is a main area or element that grabs the viewer's attention first. It's important for helping users understand what is most important on the screen and where to focus their attention. So the focal point directs users' eyes to the most important part of the interface. It makes the interface easier to understand and navigate. It visually indicates what users should look at first, helping them to grasp the importance of different elements. For example, elements with high contrast in color, size or shape stand out, like a bright button on a dark background draws attention. A big headline or image can be a focal point. Placing key elements in prominent positions like the center or top of the screen naturally draws attention. The upper left corner is often a focal point because people read from left to right. Distinctive shapes or graphics can catch the eye more than regular text. So for that, you must first decide what is the most important aspect of your app that you expect your users to see as soon as they enter your app and design accordingly. Now, another important aspect is white space. Now, white space is also known as negative space. It refers to the empty spaces around and between the elements of your design. For example, Google's homepage uses a lot of white space, making the search bar its focal point. White space makes content easier to read and understand. White space can be used to draw attention to specific elements. For example, surrounding a call to action button with white space can make it stand out more. White space helps users navigate a website or app more easily by separating different sections and making the layout more intuitive. Now, let's move on to visual hierarchy. So, visual hierarchy is a way of arranging design elements so that they appear in order of importance. It helps guide users' eyes to what they should notice first, second, and so on. Here's how you can achieve visual hierarchy. First, you have to decide which are the most important elements of your design and prioritize them. Use size to establish importance. Naturally, larger elements will draw more attention than smaller ones. So make sure you maintain the size of your texts according to the priority. Use color strategy. Use bold and bright colors for elements to stand out. For example, you can use bright catchy colors for call to action elements. Use high contrast for important elements and background and select appropriate typography and concentrate on position and layout. Now, let's explore grid system. So a grid system in layout design is like a blueprint for placing elements on a page or screen. A grid divides a page into columns and rows. It helps designers organize content in a clean, consistent and structured way. It's like an invisible guide that helps to align and space elements evenly. Now the key elements of a grid system are columns, rows, glutters, which are the spaces between columns, and margin, which is a space around the edge of a layout. So let's see an example of a grid system in use. Imagine designing a simple web page with a header, main content area, and footer. So the header will span all 12 columns, 
For the main content, it is divided into two sections. One section might take up to eight columns for the main article and the other takes up four columns for a sidebar. Now the photo also spans 12 columns just like the header. So using a grid system, you can ensure each section is aligned neatly with consistent spacing between them. Now let's move on to alignment and proximity. So alignment means arranging elements so that they line up along a common edge or axis. This makes the design look organized. Now there are two types of alignment. Edge alignment, which is left, right, top and bottom alignment. And then you have central alignment, which is horizontal alignment and vertical alignment. Now, proximity is placing related elements close to each other. This helps users understand that these elements are connected. Now, by proximity, when elements are close together, users understand that they are related. For example, buttons grouped together are understood to be a part of the same action set. Grouping related items together makes the design more organized and less cluttered. Users can quickly find and use related items because they are placed together. For example, form fields. Placing labels close to their corresponding input fields makes it clear which label goes with which field. And grouping navigation links together helps users quickly find their way around the site. So with this, we have covered the important elements of layout. Now, let's check out what is composition all about. Composition involves the arrangement of visual elements to create a cohesive and engaging user interface. It extends beyond layout to include aspects such as color, typography, and imagery. The components of an effective composition are balance, proportion, contrast, and emphasis. Let's discuss one by one. Balance in composition is all about making a design feel stable and pleasing to look at. It's like arranging furniture in a room so that it looks good. Now there are three types of balance which are symmetrical balance, asymmetrical balance and radial balance. Symmetrical balance. In design, if you place elements equally on either side of an imaginary center line, you achieve symmetrical balance. It's formal, orderly and often used in traditional designs. Asymmetrical balance. Here, elements are asymmetrically distributed relative to central imaginary axis. In radial balance, everything radiates out from a central point. Everything spreads out evenly from the center, creating a balanced and cohesive look. It's eye-catching and draws attention to the center. Next comes proportion. So proportion in composition refers to the relationship and size between different elements in a design. It's about how big or small elements are in relation to each other and to the overall layout. So proper proportion helps in making the design pleasing and easy to navigate. Now the key principles of proportion are relative size. For example, a headline might be larger than the body text to indicate its importance. Scale. Elements should fit well within the layout without feeling cramped or too sparse. Hierarchy. Use proportion to establish a visual hierarchy. Larger elements like titles or main images should stand out, while smaller elements like captions or icons support the primary content. So some of the tips you can use to maintain the good proportion are Use golden ratio. It's a mathematical ratio often found in nature and used in art. Rule of thirds. Divide the layout into thirds, both horizontally and vertically, and place important elements along these lines or at their intersections to create a balanced composition and then maintain consistent ratio for similar elements. Now let's move on to contrast. Contrast in composition refers to difference between elements that makes them stand out from each other. It helps to draw attention to important parts of a design and makes the overall layout more visually appealing and easier to understand. The key aspects include color contrast. Using different colors to make an element stand out, for example, a bright yellow button on a dark blue background will be very noticeable. Size contrast. Varying the size of elements to show the importance. Larger texts or images catch the eye more than smaller ones. Shape contrast. Using different shapes to create interest and highlight key elements. A circular button in a field of square ones will draw attention. Texture contrast. Making smooth and rough textures can make certain parts of a design pop out more. For instance, a glossy button on a matte background will be more eye-catching. And then you have position contrast. Placing elements in different positions can create contrast. An element placed at the center or top of a layout will naturally attract more attention than one placed in a corner. So now let's move on to the last component which is emphasis. Emphasis in composition is all about making certain parts of a design stand out so that they catch the viewer's attention first. It's a way to show what is most important on a page or screen. Why emphasis matters? Emphasis directs the viewer's attention to key information or important actions. It helps to highlight the most critical elements, making it clear what the user should focus on. By making important elements stand out, it helps users navigate and understand the interface more easily. 
So for creating emphasis, you can use some of the previously discussed components such as contrast, size, position, white space, etc. So now that we have covered layout and composition in UI UX design, let's see what are some of the best practices to implement these. User-centered design. Always prioritize the needs and preferences of the users. Conduct user research and testing to understand their behaviors and expectations. Responsive design. Ensure that your layout and composition adapt seamlessly to different devices and screen sizes. Accessibility. Design with accessibility in mind. Use high contrast colors so everyone can see clearly. Choose easy to read fonts and create simple navigation so users can find what they need quickly. And interactive design. Continuously test and refine your layouts and compositions based on user feedbacks and analytics. Use prototyping tools to create interactive mockups and gather insights before final implementation. So that's all for today's video. As we wrap up, keep in mind that mastering layout and composition isn't just about aesthetics. It's about crafting seamless experiences for users. Thanks for joining and hope you liked our video. Do subscribe and stay tuned for more such content. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.